I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in San Francisco for REIT World 2013. Joining me today is the outgoing NARI Chair, Ed Walter. Ed is also the President and CEO of Host Hotels and Resorts. Ed, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be here. So now that you've concluded your, your year as NARI Chair, what do you see as the most pressing issues still facing the REIT industry in the near term? Well, I, you know, I think one of the challenges of, th of this entire recovery has been the fact that GDP growth and economic development have been slower than what we've usually seen coming out of a downturn. I think as we look over the next couple of years, the wild card in terms of how companies are going to perform and how the industry performs is going to relate very closely to what happens with the economy. If we can finally get one of these years where GDP growth starts to exceed by a reasonable margin 3%, I think there's a chance to see some accelerated growth in very many of our sectors. I think one of the problems, though, that we face that's tied very closely to that is that the political gridlock in Washington has undermined the ability of our economy to grow. I am unfortunately not that optimistic in the short term that that's going to be solved, but if we could make some headway in Washington, I think that would help free up the competitive forces and we'd see stronger economic growth. And you said in your third quarter earnings call that the company is interested in ramping up its acquisition activity, but there's some challenges in, in the market to really to letting that happen. Can you elaborate a little bit on the acquisition market? Definitely. I mean, what we are seeing as we look out the next few years is the fundamentals in the lodging business are great. Supply is still low, certainly for the next two years, and I suspect longer than that. And the combination of good demand growth uh, domestically and superb demand growth internationally has created an environment where we're seeing demand growth above historical norms with supply growth projected to be below. That's all good news, but we all know that. So consequently, while we would love to buy assets that take advantage of that, I think sellers are being very careful about what they put on the market because they also recognize that there's a lot of upside in assets. So at the end of the day, you know, we have a pipeline. It's not as robust as it's been in the past. I'm confident we'll get acquisitions done, but to be honest, I'd love to be doing it at a faster pace, but we're just not either seeing the opportunity or, just as importantly, seeing the returns that we would like to see when we do find an opportunity that makes sense. And lastly, can you talk a little bit about your expectations for both your transient and your group business? Well, certainly throughout this entire recovery, transient business has been great. I mean, we are well above the levels of transient business that we saw in 2007. Uh, and this year alone, we have seen our transient revenues increase by about 8.5% year to date. So, you know, that's, that's very good transient growth. The bigger wild card in our business over the last couple of years has been what's happening on the group side. And, and this year, frankly, group business has lagged a bit. The good news is, is that after a couple of quarters where bookings were slower than what we had experienced in the prior year, the third quarter we saw a reversal of that trend. And we had stronger bookings in the third quarter for the third quarter, for the fourth quarter, and, and more importantly, we had much stronger bookings for 2014. So, it's a little early to call a trend, but I guess what I would say is I, I certainly was pleased to see the direction change, to see bookings pick up, and I'm hopeful that continues into next year because if we can get strong group demand growth next year, that creates a great foundation for strong revenue growth. Ed, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.